how did you get involved with Star Trek, William? When did you? How did, did I get fir- involved? Yeah. How, how did that first get started with you and your career? The the uh, the uh, iconic story goes like this: mm-hmm. um, They made a pilot of Star Trek with another actor, and NBC didn't want to buy it, but they were sufficiently enthralled by the uh, concept that they wanted to try again. Mm -hmm. And I was in New York doing something or other, and my phone rings, and it's Gene Roddenberry who wants me to come and see that pilot with the idea of playing the captain. So I went and saw the pilot, thought it was terrific, lacked a few things that I made some suggestions on. And <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then we shot another pilot, and, uh, and it sold, and we did three seasons of it. Did you have any sense at the time what it might be? What, what, what it was you know, I'm asked that, and, 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 and it's like, really, like the Rich Eisen show is yes. really great. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So 50 years from now, people are going to sh- point to it and say, now that is how you do a, sh- a radio show and a TV combined. Radio, TV, TV, and radio. Radio and TV, TV. The rich solve the problem. Yes. 50 years from now. Does that sound outlandish? Hmm. Let me think about that. Let me tell because you from you're... my point of view. Yes. It sounds outlandish. <laughs> <laughs> well, because there is an I in Rich and Eisen, William. You know, I mean, I I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes get caught up in myself a little bit Well, here. everybody does, but uh, you can't afford to do that on the air. So you had you? no idea at the time, essentially, what no, was happening? Oh, my God. It was, it was canceled in three years. Oh, that's another gig. Uh, I wonder what's next. Yeah. So then when did you realize that this was about another life? Six years later, mm-hmm. they started showing the outtakes where we had played the buffoon. Mm-hmm. Well, when I say we, I mean I. Um, joking around on the set. Yes. And they were filming. And the editors put together a, a Christmas show uh, of all the outtakes. Yes. So there were two Christmases in three seasons. So we had... 20 minutes were of a gag reel. Mm-hmm. Six years after it was canceled, I hear that the gag reel is being played in in bar. I was up at Mammoth, as a matter of fact, skiing. Mm-hmm. And um, and some bar in Mammoth was playing the gag reel. I mean, what the heck is that? Mm-hmm. And then that's when you realize something. Oh, I had... thought, why would they do that? I wonder what's happening. Mm-hmm. And then there were calls, and we're going to do a movie, and we're not going to do a movie. We're going to do a series. So it be, there, there was... What happened was Star Wars is what happened. Star Wars gave new life to well, Star Trek. You think? There were shots fired, people killing themselves in Paramount mm-hmm. uh, over Star Wars, and they said, "Well, what do we got?" Well, there's this show that was canceled, and maybe, and the guy, and his name is Roddenberry, and would he do it? No, I'm not going to do it. Yes, you're going to do it. I did a whole uh, documentary on on uh, the story I'm telling you. No kidding. Yeah. So, well, you know, I'm William Shatner here because you know, there's there are arguments. Amongst pop culture people, as to which is the better and more. There's no argument. Okay, and the argument is Star Trek. <laughs> I know. I'm a, I'm I know. A, I'm a guest on your show. I know with whom I'm talking. No, I know. No, but that, that is that, that is something that people go back and forth as to what's real about the science fiction genre or not. Yeah. And so, you know, well, you would it, end the it, argument. It, 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 the argument is uh, Star Wars was so technically. <laughs> Uh, proficient, you know, mm-hmm. there was great effects and stuff like that. They were, they were the leaders, and uh, ILM was the, and we, you know, there would be somebody like below pushing a, this spaceship along. And they <laughs> <laughs> you can see the string yeah, sometimes. Like, <laughs> whoosh, whoosh, <you> know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. We'll we'll do that. Yeah, uh, but the stories were good. Well, and, I mean, look, I, I got to tell you, uh, the Wrath of Khan. Star Trek Two was a phenomenal movie, How just in, in its own right, a phenomenal movie How from wonderful. start to finish. Because you were, you were, you were, um, you were uh, honest to the original, as well as advancing it, and also, you know, the way that uh, that the Star Trek characters had become of a certain age, and that was part of the conversation. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was. Phenomenal. How wonderful. I'm, I'm delighted, Rich. Thank you so much. No, you, you, you know they're going to do a showing somewhere along the line of mm-hmm. the Wrath of Khan uh, in theaters. Yes. Uh, chosen theaters. I don't know when they're going to do it. But, well, that would be, that'd be something I would see, for sure. William Shatner here on the Rich Eisen Show. And when you screamed Khan, was that, was that your own interpretation of the I, line? I, I think so. I remember. I scream a lot. 
Do you really? Richardson! <laughs> I'll take this any day of the week. <laughs> the Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that video, be sure to download our app and I'll be sure to help the NFL figure out what a catch is. <laughs>